In this video, I'm going to show you the six different shading techniques. First, we'll talk about tonal, then smudging, stippling, hatching, cross hatching, and scumbling or circulism. First, you'll just use your number two pencil, and you can grab really any lid off like a, a bottle cap or um, anything circular that you have, or you could just freehand your circles. I'm gonna go ahead and trace them. And then go ahead and label each one with those six different names that I just mentioned. I'm going to start with tonal shading. So I'm going to start with my 6B pencil and I'm going to start with the darkest shading right over here. So with tonal shading, you're not going to use your finger to smudge, you're really just depending on the type of pencil to do its job. And when you're shading a sphere, so we're going to turn each of these circles into a sphere, which is a three-dimensional circle or ball kind of shape. You want to start shading kind of like in a, a C shape around we're gonna do the left side, so we're gonna pretend that we have a light source coming in from the right that's shining bright on this sphere. I'm gonna go ahead and make kind of like a crescent moon shape. I'm gonna put down my 6B pencil, I'm gonna pick up my 4B pencil, kind of transition into a slightly lighter pencil. And I'm keeping up with that curve, curved shape kind of like a C, kind of like a crescent moon. And I'm gonna slowly start to creep up even further on the edges there. I'm gonna pick up my 2B pencil, going even lighter. And notice how I'm laying my pencil pretty flat. I'm not shading straight up and down with my pencil. I'm actually gonna add just a little bit of shading right here on the edge, but that's all we're gonna do really on that side to make it look like that sphere. And I'm gonna go even lighter with my HB pencil. Okay. And I can go ahead and add my shadow as well. So I'm gonna use my 6B pencil for that. So if my light source is coming from this side, my shadow is gonna be on this side. So I'm gonna do a nice stretched out oval and you can leave a tiny little gap between your shadow and your object right there. So that's tonal. So you're not going to smudge with your finger at all. You're just depending on the different types of pencil to do their job. You want to make sure it's in a curved shape when you're coloring or shading that. And you want to just wrap it around a little bit on that edge. Now with smudging, you're actually going to use a, either your finger I find that your finger is not very precise, so I like to use a paper towel and kind of twist the edge a little bit or fold it into a point, kind of like that, and that way I can smudge with that. So I'll use that in just a second. But first I'm gonna start with that same technique as I just did with my tonal shading. I'm gonna take my 6B pencil, kind of start with that crescent moon shape. I'm gonna really lay down my graphite, really get a nice layer on there. So I can smudge it all around, starting in that crescent moon shape, getting really thin toward this edge. I'm going to take my paper towel now. I'm going to start moving in the same direction that I was just coloring in. I'm going to start smudging into the center, slowly, gradually moving toward that light spot. And then you're Paper towel will get kind of dirty, so you can always fold it over, get a new fresh spot, get a little more pointy piece of paper towel. And you can also grab a slightly lighter pencil, like a 4B pencil, really to add in just a little extra layer of shading in there, just around that outside edge. And I'm gonna kind of let the sh shadow creep in a little bit more right here. And then I'm gonna smudge once again. Except you want to avoid that spot right there because that's your highlight. A highlight is where it's 
where you've got really high amounts of light. It's really reflective. That's where your light is most reflecting off of from that light source right there. If you ever notice that you go a little too dark like I just have, you can erase away your highlight and then you can always smudge it right back in. Okay, now I have a much more pronounced highlight. So that's smudging. You can also use your finger, but obviously it's gonna make your finger a little messy and it's not as precise. All right, this next technique is stippling. This one is gonna take a little while. It might get a little bit frustrating, but if you keep up um, all the hard work, it will end up with a pretty nice result. So stippling is just making a, a bunch of dots, like so. You can also keep your hand on the paper and just kind of tap down like this, or you can kind of tap your whole hand up and down. So what you wanna do is make sure that you've got lots of dots very concentrated, very close together here, and then start to spread them out as you get closer to that bright spot of the highlight. And notice as I get to this area, I'm going a little bit slower, letting them space out a little more. So it looks like it's a little lighter. It has more of that white paper showing through. So I've made a nice concentration of really dark dots there, um, lots of them kind of close together so you don't see as much of that white paper, so it makes it look dark. I'm actually going to erase this little dot right here so that I really have a pronounced highlight spot. And then you could do the stippling for the shadow as well. And obviously this technique is a lot more time intensive. It'll probably make your arm and hand sore, um, but the end result's a pretty unique look. All right, so next we have hatching. So this is a series of lines. So hatching, you're only gonna make your lines um, parallel. I'm gonna kind of follow the edges of a, the sphere here. And then as I reach the center here, I'm gonna start making them go a little more straight. And then they're gonna curve down a little bit to really show the curvature of this sphere. So again, I'm gonna bring that sh shading a little bit over just to hint on that other side. And this one, it's nice to have a nice sh sharp point and you don't have to lay your pencil down as much. You can kind of keep it upright. So with this one, you really have to pay attention to how that object is curved or shaped to kind of make those lines. You don't wanna cross over any of them too much because that's really the cross hatching method, which I'll show you next. Um, and I'll go ahead and do that shadow. Nice elongated oval, just made with those lines. And then for the shadow, I don't have to make them curved. I'm just kind of following the direction of that shadow. And next we have cross hatching. I'm using my 4B pencil again because it's nice and dark, but not too, too crazy dark. What we're gonna do here is very similar to the hatching, um, but just for preference, if you would like to continue like following the curve of that sphere, just like we did with the hatching, you can. Um, my preference is just to kind of keep it all going in one direction, but that is totally up to you. And then I'm gonna turn my, my hand here so I can actually crisscross these lines. And I'm gonna crisscross a bunch of them right here at the edge. 
because that's where it's going to get really dark. I'm going to switch over to my 2B pencil. My 4B pencil is a little soft for this. And the further apart you space your lines, the lighter it's going to look. The closer you lay your lines together, the darker it's going to look. And then same thing with the shadow. And the last one is scumbling or circulism. You can call them either name. I'm going to go ahead and use my 2B pencil. You can test it out with a 4B pencil if you would like to. So this one you're going to just make a series of swirls and kind of scribbles. And the smaller your scribble, the darker it's going to look, the more spread out your scribble, the lighter it's going to look. You can also ease up on your pressure whenever you're doing this. Like right here, I just kind of didn't push down as hard just to get that lighter um, feel as well. I'm gonna switch back to my 4B pencil just to really get this area nice and dark on the edge. I could even choose my 6B pencil if I wanted to. And then right around here, I'm gonna go back just at the edge to really finish off that shadow that's coming around the other side. And then I'm gonna add in my shadow using that same method, the scumbling method. There you go. So you don't want to scribble in so much that it pretty much looks like a solid black. You still want to be able to see your scribbles or um, your scumbling marks. All right, so those are our six shading techniques. You've got tonal, smudging, stippling, hatching, cross-hatching, and scumbling or circulism. Remember, the tonal, you're not going to shade with your finger at all. You're just relying on the layering of different types of pencils for the different types of values on your sphere. Smudging, you can smudge with your finger. You can smudge with a paper towel. You're really making a nice, soft, blended look. Stippling, you're tapping your pencil up and down a billion times to create that dark shadow and that light highlight. Try not to make little dashes when you tap. Try to just make a dot when you tap. With hatching, you're going to make those lines that are all pretty much parallel with each other. They don't crisscross. With hatching, they do crisscross. And the closer your lines are together for both of these, the darker it's going to look. The more spread out they are, the lighter that area is going to look. And then scumbling or circulism, you're going to make a bunch of little scribbles. The smaller your scribble, the closer together your scribble, the darker it will look. The larger your scribble and farther apart they are, the lighter it will look. Always remember to pay attention to where it is darkest and where it is lightest in order for you to appropriately choose what values go where.